My name is Chris Massey and I'll be your offensive coordinator for today's webinar. All puns aside, I am a strategic account manager for Ron Blake and Associates and I look forward to sharing my specification strategies with you. Thank you for signing on today. American football is widely recognized and understood sport in many parts of the world, growing in popularity globally year over year. Today, we'll draw parallels between players, strategies, and goals in football to the various components and goals of the architectural specification process. Now, just as football teams and players face various challenges, so do companies and product reps. And by the end of today's presentation, we should be able to implement winning strategies for engaging architects and specifiers, comparable to how a quarterback game plans and executes plays out on the gridiron. We should also be able to better leverage continuing education courses, as well as your offensive line, in order to stay atop of your game. You'll also have a better understanding of the similarities between interceptions in football and architects' product substitutions, and in the process, learn how to anticipate and mitigate those substitutions effectively. And as we break the huddle on today's webinar, you should be able to convert opportunities into successful product specifications essentially drawing parallels to your team's red zone offense. So with all of that, let's huddle up. Legendary New York Giants and Dallas Cowboys coach Tom Landry once said, setting a goal is not the main thing. It's deciding how you will go about achieving it and staying with that plan. So what are your specification goals? Where is your company right now? Where do you want to be and how do you get there? Well, let's find out. We can break down the various components of building product specifications into the following parallels with football. You have the rules of the game, building your team, the importance of the quarterback and the offensive line, developing and executing winning plays, mastering the fundamentals, that ever important opening drive, percolating the ball down the field, and eventually hitting pay dirt or touchdown. So, some of this may go unsaid, but not wanting to leave anything to chance today, what are the rules of the game? Well, the rules of the game involve a set of guidelines and processes that architects, specifiers, and construction professionals follow to select and specify the materials and products to be used in a building project. Essentially, the key rules being compliance with building codes, meaning that all specified products must meet the building codes, regulations, and standards applicable to the project's location. After all, in the world of building codes, an open concept is just a fancy term for missing a few walls. Suitability for intended use specifically means that products should meet the project's functional, aesthetic, and performance requirements. You know, specified products should also meet quality and durability standards to ensure that they perform well over the expected lifespan of the building. Quality building products age like a fine wine, not like the chopped brisket sandwich that was left in the fridge after last season's disappointing playoff loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm looking at you, Mr. Roy Schaffel. Moving on to cost effectiveness, products should be chosen with consideration for the project's budget and cost effectiveness. Specifiers need to find a balance between quality and cost. Building products must also be compatible with other specified materials and systems within the construction, ensuring that they all work together seamlessly. Mixing incompatible building products is like expecting Sooner and Longhorn fans to peacefully coexist. Oh, it's gonna make headlines, but for all the wrong reasons, and it's just not gonna end up well. If your product is being specified for a lead project, you better have HPDs, VOC emissions testing, and other transparency documentation available. Otherwise, your first down conversion has now become a third and long. Products should also have undergone relevant testing and certification processes to verify their compliance with industry standards and regulations. Availability and lead times? One well, of the products should also be readily available for manufacturers or suppliers with reasonable lead times to meet project schedules. Late materials on a construction site can make architects go from zen to zero patience very quickly. Now, the reputation and track record of the product's manufacturer or supplier plays a significant role in the specification process. A reputable manufacturer is more likely to provide high quality products and support. In today's game, manufacturers need to have three-part guide specs, drawing details, building information modeling, or BIM, 
technical literature as well as samples. Now, in the event that a, a specified product becomes unavailable or needs to be substituted, there should be clear rules and procedures for substitutions. And this typically involves the approval of architects and project stakeholders. And last, but definitely not least in the rules of the game, effective communication and collaboration between architects, specifiers, contractors, and product manufacturers is crucial. All parties involved should work together to make informed decisions. Now, Coach Landry was an architect behind some of the most successful and innovative offensive and defensive teams of all time. He once said, confidence comes from knowing what you're doing. If you are prepared for something, you usually do it. If not, well, you usually fall flat on your face. Or as I like to say, failing to plan is planning to fail. I'm giving you all a little background on Tom Landry. He was born down in the Rio Grande Valley in the tiny Texas town of Mission back in 1924. Being just larger than a wide spot in the road today, if you blink, you'd probably miss it. But Landry played quarterback and puncher for Mission High, where he led his team to a 12-0 record his senior year. Upon graduation from high school, he attended the University of Texas at Austin as an industrial engineering major. Landry's academic career in Austin was cut short during World War II upon learning that his brother Robert was killed when his B-17 went down in the North Atlantic while en route over to England. And as a result, Landry joined the United States Army Air Corps during World War II and flew 30 combat missions in Europe, often deep in the enemy territory, frequently returning with minimal fuel. Now, during one of those return flights, he actually ran out of fuel and ended up crash landing in Belgium. Those experiences were definitely instrumental in the development of Landry's strong uh, leadership skills and likely the reason behind how he was able to stay so calm on the sidelines as thousands of fans and foes screamed at the top of their lungs. All this while his players tried to execute his complex flex defense. And, and that's a transition where the big men up front fill the gaps in the line instead of chasing after the ball carrier. A good example of being proactive versus reactive. Now, after the war, he returned to UT Austin and played fullback and defensive back for the Texas Longhorns. And after a stint with the New York Giants, he went on to become the, the, the uh, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and created innovative strategies that would forever change the game. A good portion of Tom Landry's success as a coach was born in the cockpit of a B-17, braving the skies over Nazi Germany, flying through deadly flak, and really just living to fly another day. Or as a, another Longhorn once said, L-I-V-I-N. So let's get back to those key components here. Let's touch on the importance of building an effective team. Building a team of highly talented product reps to reach architects and increase building product specifications, that requires a, a strategic approach. Manufacturers should understand the following. Right off the bat, define your goals. Set clear, measurable goals and a timeline for achieving them. Understand the architect's perspective. What problems can your product solve for them? Hire product reps with a construction background when, when, when able. Educate your reps not only about your products, but also your competitors. Additionally, encourage them to get their CDT credential through CSI and their lead green associate credential through the USGBC. These are resources to ensure that they're at the top of their game. Additionally, develop a strong value proposition. What are the unique benefits and features of your amazing product? Does your company have an AIA online course, webinar, or a classroom presentation? How do you reach lead professionals? Are you leveraging social media to promote your products? And how, does your team use blogs and podcasts and LinkedIn videos? You know, essential to success in our industry Encourage your reps to build and maintain relationships with architects, both in person and through networking events. Use online courses and webinars and live events such as conventions to connect with the decision makers. You know, in a world where we've traded quality customer service for convenience, providing exceptional customer support is a game changer. Ensure that architects have easy access to technical support and product information. Resolve issues promptly and maintain a reputation for excellent customer service by being responsive, setting and abiding to those expectations and being personable in the process. Also provide clear and concise communication. These four aspects alone go a very long way in setting you apart from the competition. Additionally, focus on outcomes, not activities. 
phone calls, emails, voice messages, those are business getting activities, not outcomes. Now, if an activity like an AIA course is linked to a positive outcome, then that should be emphasized. You need to define performance, outcomes, and strategies with your teams. Now, going to trade shows and sending samples and shooting off emails, those are all activities. Getting your product specified is an outcome, and let's remain focused on that. Now, the architect is on your team, and clearly you're trying to get the ball down the field and score a touchdown. Your team includes uh, uh, building product reps, your marketing team, admin staff, as well as research and development and technical support. Your team is trying to avoid an interception, or in other words, a product substitution. So you're the quarterback, and your offensive line are your members who are essentially uh, successful in moving the ball down the field. Now, these team members could be product reps, marketing staff, admin personnel, technical specialists. It, it really doesn't matter as long as your products get specified. Keep in mind, it takes a team to win. So with that, how is your team get, currently getting the ball down the field? How is your team getting your product specified? Well, building product manufacturers need to be innovative. They need to be passionate and persistent to win the specifications game. And there are several strategies that can help with this, but today we'll focus on continuing education as it offers one of the most cost-effective methods for manufacturers to reach decision makers, to build relations, and in the process, increase specification opportunities. Now, the three primary methods of educating architects and specifiers and engineers and interior designers, contractors, and all the other design professionals, those three methods include online courses, webinars, and lunch and learns. And most likely everyone on here has familiarity with those strategies, but at the same time, many of you will be surprised and excited to learn about innovative ways to leverage these winning plays and increase your specification opportunities in the process. Now, some manufacturers lose spec, some uh, manufacturers lose market share, and others lose the game because they just don't innovate and they don't adapt to the changing times. Now, we can learn a lot about winning strategies from Coach Landry. He introduced several groundbreaking strategies to the game, including the 4-3 defense and the shotgun formation on offense. His innovations reshaped how football was played and laid the foundation for strategies at all levels in today's game. Coach Landry was not married to a single playing style, but he tailored his approach to the strengths and the, of his players and the challenges posed by his opponents. This flexibility allowed him to stay relevant in a constantly evolving game. A little side note, did y'all know that Landry was actually one of the first NFL coaches to use computer technology for game planning? Yeah, he would actually analyze statistical data to determine the optimal strategies for each game. And of course, that's an approach that is uh, now commonplace in, in today's game in the NFL. So with all of that, what winning plays can manufacturers develop to, to beat their competition and increase their specification opportunities. Well, here's some stats to help create winning plays for you and your team. There are currently over 120,000 licensed architects in the United States with an additional 35,000 or more candidates working towards their licensure. 46 states currently have CE requirements with the majority of those states requiring anywhere between 24 and 20, or 12 and 24 hours of continuing education annually or every two years. So why is education so important and a great way to reach decision makers? Here's some additional stats for y'all. There's 96,000 AIA members who need to obtain 18 HSW continuing education credits annually. There's an additional 100,000 or more lead professionals, and those folks need either 15 or 30 continuing education credits biannually. In addition to that, there's more than 50,000 interior design professionals who also need to obtain continuing education requirements. Now, it's a lot of education, and in education providers such as Ron Blink and Associates will issue several hundred thousand hours of CE credit each year. Your courses could help educate these professionals and open up specification opportunities for you in the process. Now, there are three cost-effective and highly successful strategies that only a few manufacturers use. They are the manufacturers most likely with the highest market share, the most jobs, and they're probably the most feared in the industry. Now, these winning plays include the following, and the first being register your CE course with both the AIA and GBCI. Most manufacturers only register their course with AIA. This leaves immense opportunity on the table. 
Keep in mind that there are over 100,000 lead professionals that need to obtain CE credit each year or biannually, and your course doesn't even need to mention lead to get approved. The second strategy, develop a lead specific hour course. Lead professionals need lead specific hours to maintain their credential. Courses that are lead specific perform two to three times higher than that of just your standard HSW course. And from where we sit, we're talking as many as 200 to 250 leads a month and even more than that at times. Now, if you want a ton of monthly leads, increase brand recognition and more specification opportunities, well then this is your ticket to the big game. The third effective and highly successful strategy is to create two different webinars. Now, by a show of hands, how many of y'all currently offer webinars? Excellent, excellent. Well, if you don't, you need to because your competition's probably killing it in the marketplace. Now, some manufacturers will make the mistake of only uh, creating a singular webinar and they'll deliver that several times a year and they will ride that same course for years. This will result in lower attendance, lower ROI, and fewer specification opportunities. You can look at this as being comparable to teams that overly use and rely on a, a singular running back. He's eventually gonna wear down, resulting in reduced effectiveness, uh, a one-dimensional offense, and it also creates a higher potential for turnovers, injuries, and missed opportunities. Now, the teams that do deploy and utilize more than one running back, you know, leveraging their skill set for that specific situation, you know, passing downs, short yardage situations, and so forth, those teams tend to be more successful than the other teams due to that versatility. So we do recommend offering at least two different webinars during the year to maintain design professionals' interest and opportunities. Alternating those webinars every quarter or so will quickly build up a successful program for you guys. So with that, what really makes a great CE presentation? Well, here's a few insider tips to help increase your specification opportunities, and let's start with the course title. Your course title should be clear, concise, and engaging. It should give potential learners a good idea of what to expect. We recommend using action verbs to describe what participants will learn or achieve and basically let them know what they're in store for. Your learning objectives should be specific and measurable. They help participants understand that what they're gonna gain from attending the course. Ask yourself, what is it that you want the design professionals to walk away with? When it comes to images and videos, incorporate images and videos that enhance understanding and engagement and ensure that these are clear, relevant, and professional. Now, there is a chance that your presentation may be the first thing a, a specifier sees from your company. First impressions are everything, so make sure that your presentation is excellent. Architects pick winners to ensure that their buildings do not end up as fodder on social media. So set the tone with your opening drive by delivering a, pre uh, a presentation about your awesome building product. Make sure that this incorporates the following criteria that we've already touched on here today. Proven product. Is it suitable for intended use? Normal installation procedures and also include any sustainable attributes. Does your product meet local building codes and does it also meet safety concerns? What is the, the product warranty information? And definitely include any testing and certifications as well. Now, after you've delivered your CE presentation, whether it's a lunch and learn, a webinar, or an online course, it's time to line up and move the ball down the field towards the end zone. Let's say you've created a captivating online course and a design professional takes your course, then contacts you about your products. Uh, how do you score the touchdown? Well, here's a few winning plays. First off, deliver the information. This may include three-part guide specs, product data, drawings, BIM samples, even lead documentation. You know, additionally assist with drawings or specifications. If this is a custom job with special requirements, make sure that your, uh, that your team uh, supplies the design professionals with the deliverables they need. Defend your product against substitutions. Holy smokes, nobody wants an interception while percolating the ball down the field. So how can you defend the use of your product? Let's dive into that a little more detail. An interception in football can be a game changer. Football interceptions and building product substitutions by architects share similarities because they both involve unexpected changes and a carefully planned strategy. It introduces the likelihood of adverse consequences with the outcome. So let's examine the similarities between the two. The impact on the game. 
An interception can dra uh, dramatically shift the momentum of a football game. It could lead to points for the opposing team and change the course of the contest. Similarly, building product substitutions can impact construction projects by altering costs, timelines, and even the quality of the final structure. You know, both interceptions and building product substitutions involve a level of risk and reward. In football, the reward is a sudden shift in momentum and a change in possession in the very least, while the risk, at least for the offense, is a turnover and lost opportunity to put points on the board. Now, in construction, the reward for substitutions might be cost savings, but the risk involves potential compromises in quality and or delays. Touching on adaptability. Successful football teams and architects must be adaptable. When an interception occurs or when a building product, <clears throat> excuse me, building product uh, substitutions are needed, they must adjust their strategies and decision making to ensure a positive outcome. Product substitutions are a common occurrence, so it's essential to be prepared to justify the, the choice of your product. Now, just as you would uh, when introducing your product to a design professional, be ready to give a similar presentation to contractors, subcontractors, and even suppliers. If they bring up a competitor's lower cost, demonstrate how your product outperforms by reducing failures, minimizing callbacks, and requiring fewer on-site meetings with design professionals and owners. Most professionals, they're likely to opt for a slightly higher initial cost if it means reducing or eliminating potential risks. Building product substitutions share an unexpected kinship with the world of football. Now, just as a team's dedication, strategic planning, and unwavering effort can lead to victor in the gridiron, in the realm of construction, hard work, meticulous preparation, and commitment to excellence can secure a win in the form of a product specification. Now, whether between the hash marks or in the world of architecture and construction, success is ultimately achieved by those who bring their best to the game those that adapt to the changing conditions, and those that are persistently chasing the elusive touchdown. I do want to thank you all for your time today, and uh, Brianne, I'm ready for some questions if you have some. Great, Chris. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier, if you do not see that questions box, simply click the orange arrow to expand that in the GoToWebinar panel, then the triangle icon next to where it says questions, enter your text and click send, and we will receive those in real time. Our first question today, Chris, is our course is registered with the AIA. How hard is it to get GBCI approval for LEED courses? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, asking. It's actually quite easy to, to get your course registered with the GBCI for LEED APs. Uh, we do this every day. You don't need to know anything about LEED or even have a LEED AP on staff. We'll do all the heavy lifting, we'll write the content, and make sure that your course meets the standards of the GBCI. Um, additionally, we can provide you with a free uh, quote on converting your AI course and give you about a 48-hour turnaround time on that. And keep in mind, a GBCI course will get you in front of over 100,000 lead professionals, thus increasing your, your spec opportunities. Great, Chris. Thank you so much. Our next question is, we have low attendance on our webinars that we host. How do we get more architects and specifiers to show up and how do you drive traffic? This is another great question and something that I, I, I feel pretty frequently. Um, I've talked to several manufacturers over the years who host their own webinars and, and you're plainly put, they just don't get the traffic we do. And, and the reason for that's pretty simple. Most manufacturers will focus on one type of product, whereas on our platform, our webinars and online courses are, are set up by you know, the multiple CSI divisions and product categories. Um, design professionals can learn about several products in a singular setting. Uh, and additionally, the other benefit to hosting our platform is how we drive traffic and ensure high attendance. When you host a webinar, for example, on our platform, we'll advertise your engagement multiple times to our subscribers and that's a database of tens of thousands of design professionals who attend our webinars and take our online courses throughout the year. Now, in addition to that, keep in mind, we've been offering online courses now for going on 24 years, and we were actually the first AIA online course provider. So our marketing plan ensures that you have high attendance as well as the right audience. And uh, you, at the end of the day, you do want to reach the decision makers. So with that, the decision makers, they do get a front row seat to learn about your products. Um, 
ideally let our team you know quote you two to three different webinars for your products we can alternate those webinars every other month or so and help you to increase your product specification opportunities in the process wonderful thank you so much our next question is we typically target interior designers for our products does your team only develop aia and lead courses hmm uh, this is another solid question and one that I've seen to be answered more frequently. Uh, we do develop courses for multiple organizations. Uh, I would think think of AIA and GBCI as the bare minimum that you want to do. Most states accept AIA courses as the default for their state mandate. However, we develop courses for interior designers that are registered with the IDCEC. Uh, we also register courses with RCEP so that engineers can obtain their mandatory uh, CE credits as well. Um, going back to the interior designers, you know, uh, thousands of interior designers, uh, design professionals attend our online courses and webinars each year. Uh, and in addition to that, you know, we, I know we have a few attendees from uh, the Canadian provinces. Um, most of the courses are accepted in the many of the, the Canadian provinces as well. So we can definitely work with your team and create a comprehensive plan to, to target the right audience and implement a, a winning plan to reach those decision makers. Awesome, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and close off the Q&A portion here. Do you have anything else to add for us today? Uh, sure. I want to thank you all for your time. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's webinar and that you found this information to be beneficial. Um, I have included my contact information on the screen and I hope to be a point of contact for you from over here. Um, please reach out to me with any questions or concerns that you may have with continuing education or reach out if you simply just want to talk and chat football. <laughs> I'm here for you and I'm happy to help. Thank you guys so much for, for attending my first webinar today. Awesome, Chris. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude today's presentation. We thank you for joining us today and we look forward to the opportunity of working with you and your team in the future. We hope you have a great rest of your day and please do contact Chris if you have any questions. Thank you.